We're almost to the finish line. Cannons, cannonballs, enemies, and collision. The last thing to do is track the player's score and use the text drawing methods and the XNA framework to display the score on the screen. To start out, we need the help of the content pipeline. Fonts start their lives as vector artwork. Unlike sprites, they are not strictly pixels in an image. They are mathematical equations that define smooth curves that display correctly no matter how big or small they are. That's very handy for word processors and illustration programs, but vector drawing of fonts is pretty costly for a game that needs to run fast, so we need to turn these vector fonts into images so that they can be displayed like regular sprites on the screen. That's where the XNA Framework Content Pipeline comes in. Take a look at your Solution Explorer. If your content folder isn't open, click the plus sign next to it to open it up. We have one subfolder called Sprites. We want a second subfolder, just underneath Content, for our new font. So, right-click on the Content icon, select Add, and then New Folder. Name this new folder, Fonts. Now, right-click on this new Fonts folder and select Add, then New Item. You'll see a dialog pop up. You've seen this before, when you were adding your new Game Object class. But this time, we don't want to add a new class. You will see an item in the list, probably at the bottom right, called Sprite Font. This is what you want. Click it once, then type game font dot sprite font into the name box and click add. When you do that, a new tab will open up in the code window. This doesn't look like the code we've been working with, and it isn't. It's not C sharp, it's XML, extensible markup language a way of defining data that programs can use. This XML is arranged in a way that represents font information to the XNA Framework Content Pipeline. The Content Pipeline reads this data in and generates an image for a font based on the data it reads. We need to make a couple of changes to this XML to get it to work right. If you've worked with HTML code before, You'll notice XML follows a similar style, with data bracketed by tags, words sandwiched between greater than and less than signs. We'll only edit the data in between the tags. You don't want to change the tags themselves. First, find the tag marked font name. Inside this tag, you'll see the string game font. What we need to do is change it to the name of an actual font on your system. A good standard font everyone knows and has is Arial, so change game font to Arial. Below that is another tag marked Size. Inside that is the default text size, 14 points. Let's make the font a little bigger so it'll be nice and easy to read. We'll change it to 18. Good, we're done with this file. Hit Control S to save it, then change over to the Game1.cs tab. All right, we have the sprite font content, but much like the images for our sprites, we can't use it in our game until we load it through the content pipeline in our game code. So, first thing is first, declare some variables. Get to the top of Game 1 where we have all of our variables. Then, scroll down past the enemy variables you created. Add a new line and type the following. int score sprite font font vector2 
score draw point equals new vector two open parenthesis zero point one f comma zero point one f we will declare an integer a whole number to serve as our score counter. Then, we declare a sprite font object. This is the runtime version of the sprite font XML file we just created, similar to what Texture2D is to the image files we have for our sprites. Finally, a vector2 will help us place the score in the right spot on the screen. Now, let's load this sprite font through the content pipeline. Go to the load content method using the method selector. Scroll down past the enemy array initialization. Add a new line, then the following line. Font equals content.load. Open angle bracket. Sprite font, close angle bracket, open parenthesis, quotation, capital fonts, backslash, backslash, capital game font, quotation, close parenthesis. This assigns our sprite font to the result of the content manager.load call. The argument is the path to the game font file inside the fonts folder we created. With the sprite font loaded, we're almost ready to draw. Let's make sure we are tracking score properly first. <laughs> 